Today I want to share with you how I make my super cute mini Victoria sponge cakes. These go down a treat. Uh, did a church event the other day, went within seconds, didn't even get a look in. Um, but they're great for things like birthday parties, occasions, even just afternoon tea. And I think will be really great for the Queen's Jubilee. So how do you make them? Really simple. So if you've never even baked a cake successfully before, Follow these tips. I can't stress that enough because these tips will ensure that you make the best little sponge cakes in the world too. So we are here behind. I have got the oven on to 180 degrees centigrade. It's really important to preheat your oven properly. The next thing is to deal with what you're going to put the cakes in, what you're going to cook them in. I have an amazing tin here. What you probably don't see is actually the bottoms lift up. I'll try and take one out there to show you. Anyway, first tip. This is a great one for measurements actually, because what you do is you measure your eggs. So two eggs and you weigh them, just like I'm gonna show here what I did earlier on. And so I weighed the eggs and that came out to 135 grams. So the next thing you do is you get your flour, 135 grams. Your butter, 135 grams. Your sugar, 135 grams. Are you getting me? <laughs> I don't think it could be any easier than that. So we're gonna be using the mixer today, but you can use a hand mixer as well. What I would say is that you follow the tips to do with the mixer closely because there's a fine line between your cake working and it not working. And the tips I'm gonna give you is gonna help. So we're gonna go over to the KitchenAid now and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in that 135 grams of butter and the 135 grams of caster sugar. What you're going to do then is really mix that up well for approximately five minutes. And the technique here is super important. Now you'll see that your mixture at the start is quite yellow. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it for five minutes until it goes whiter and whiter and creamy and fluffy because that will give you a really good result. So that there now is really light, white and fluffy. That took around about five minutes going at some speed. So if you've got a hand mixer, keep going. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your self-raising flour and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. Don't forget, again, it's weighed out at 135 or depending on what your eggs weigh. I'm just gonna put a little bit of it in to start of the self-raising flour and then a little bit of the beaten egg. So the two eggs, just crack them, beat, beat them up and I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time and mix it again. A little bit of the flour. And a little bit of the egg. Another quick tip is about the self-raising flour that you're using. Make sure it's in date. Otherwise, you could have a flatter cake. It probably won't even rise. It's very temperamental, so make sure your self-raising flour has got a good long date to it. Now, the next thing I'd like to add is some vanilla extract. Not essence, because that's fake. I want extract, which is a proper, nicer vanilla flavor. So I want to pop in just around about half a teaspoon in there. Just put some in. And then we're going to come on to the next point, which is adding the milk. It's quite a thick, sticky mixture at present. And it all depends on the flour you use or how much you're weighing with your eggs, etc., etc., to how much milk you use. But what you're looking for is what's called like a drop consistency. So I've got around about 100 mils here. I might need a little bit less. I might need a little bit more. But this way I'll be able to show you exactly the type of consistency that I want for my cake. So first off I'm just going to take a spatula and go around the edges of the bowl just to get any sort of like 
ingredients like flour and that that have just sort of decided to become a cling on. There we go. And now I'm going to add a little bit of the milk. There we go. And mix it through. A little bit more. And that's the consistency I'm looking for. Can you see there? I've just lifted the spatula up and it will just sort of drop eventually. Does that make sense? It will drop off a spoon or a spatula. It's just at the right consistency. And then again, just make sure you go around the bowl and make sure that there are no other bits. But you don't want to over mix this or under mix. It's a fine balance in act sometimes. So I've got my mixture ready and got my case ready. The important thing to note as well is I have buttered and greased them. Can you see? You see the butter there around the edges and around the bottoms. That again just helps to loosen the cakes and give them that nice edge around them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these halfway up and that way then it will give them room to expand as well. Don't worry either, um, top tip, about trying to spread them out inside the tin and make them all level because what they do is they sort of settle and move themselves out when they're actually in the oven. So all the mixture in there and now it's simply a case of putting them in the oven for around about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, varies on your oven, so keep an eye after 15 and then you'll soon see in a minute when they're soft and bouncy, that's when you know that they're ready. So they've come out of the oven and they're all beautiful and springy. Now you've got to let them cool down and then pop them on a wire rack to further cool down. Now, word of warning, another tip for successful baking. Don't use metal implements when you use your bakeware because you can scratch them and then that takes the non-stick away. The other thing is, is that many of them say, oh, they're dishwasher safe. But out, over sort of time, you tend to find that, again, they lose their non-stick. So the best thing that you can do is hand wash your bakeware and just be a little bit gentle. But as you can see, let me to see there, these are brilliant because it, they just sort of pop out the bottom real handy. The other good thing about this is you'll see when I take them out is that because this pan has got lovely level sides, if you're using a muffin tin, they're going to have that angular look. So, yeah, I might have just persuaded you to have bought some new bakeware, but I can assure you, you'll use it again and again for things like quiches, for mini cheesecakes, for little mini banoffee pies and for mini sponges. Definitely a useful pan to have in your cupboard. So I'm just busy cutting these in half now that they've cooled down because I'm going to be filling these with something nice today. Usually I do like something like, I don't know, whipped double cream and jam. Um, but I'm actually going to be doing buttercream today and I'm going to show you how to make a quick buttercream. So let's whip up a super quick buttercream. So in here I have got 40 grams of butter and I'm just going to add a couple of drops of vanilla extract again. Not too much this time because it is strong. So just a couple of drops in there. And then I'm going to pop in around about a tablespoon of milk it may need a little bit more, but we'll go with a tablespoon for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start whizzing that butter and that milk up now so that it's nice and soft, because then I'm going to be adding in the icing sugar. And otherwise, all you end up with is like a big icing cloud, if I put it in now. So there is method to my madness. Now, because that's just coated the bowl real nice, now we can add in the icing sugar and hope that it doesn't go all over the place. It's very temperamental. Slowly does it. And whiz. Now 
Now don't be afraid to go around the edges and just make sure that you've got no clumps of mixture anywhere, especially like icing, sugar and butter. Um, and if you do need to add a little bit more milk, then do, but go steady with the milk because you can soon make it super runny if you put too much in. So there you can see a soft, whippy, almost like mousse-like texture. You could, if you really, really like thick buttercream, double this up, but it can be quite sickly if you're not careful, especially when you're adding jam and that to it. So um, that's more than enough. Anyway, time to get assembling. As you can see, just enough. Now for the jam. Now before I get to the final flourish of what I like to do at the end, if you could hit the subscribe button and follow me, I would be so appreciative. Thank you to all my subscribers too. I love each and every one of you. And don't forget, by subscribing, you can find the recipes in the playlists a lot easier so you know where the recipe came from. Now, over to the naughty bit and to get the kettle on.